Hello friends, welcome to EPG Pathshala. Today we are going to talk about one of my favorite subject that is geographic information system. We are going to be introduced to this and I am Dr. Seema Mehra Parihar who specializes in natural resource management and remote sensing in GIS. This paper falls into the discipline of geography and today we are going to learn many things and I promise that after this lesson you all are also going to be ready to use GIS. Learning objectives of this module are four. Number one, you're going to be able to define geographic information system and also try to understand and learn the basic concepts of GIS. You're going to understand what GIS can answer and do. And also, you'll be able to identify the various data sets, elements and components of GIS. In addition, you'll be able to visualize the relevance of GIS and be able to list some GIS software. Dear friends, are you using GIS? According to me, we all are using GIS knowingly or unknowingly. Why? Because it's all there in the world wide. There are number of places, there are number of reasons that we are using GIS. Number one is why? Because the theoretical and technological advancements are taking place so rapidly that today no one can stop without knowing GIS. And GIS is interdisciplinary in nature. It's not only we geographers, the ones who study GIS, but it's all of us, many disciplines, and we also borrow from many disciplines. GIS is all location, and everything around us is location, location, location. The data says that 80% of the decision making that we take today is based on location. Now you have a map adjacent to you. It's been taken from Google map on 11 June. Locate seven places around the Nido which is there inside that red star and what we find is that there are a number of places which are located there but as the task which I have given it to you is to locate seven places around that and number one in case if we have a look at this is Niti Khan 1, number two Indirapuram, number three ATS, number four Shipra Sun City, Number 5, Aditya Mega City. Number 6, we have Kala Pathar. And number 7, we have Gyan Khand 4. Similarly, you all can locate number of places around yourself. Now, let's go ahead and let's try to understand what is GIS. GIS is Geographic Information System. Some people also call it a spatial information system and nowadays the trend from the marble is to call it geographic information science. Let's now unveil few definitions of GIS. As marble says, GIS is the one system which is where you collect information. It's capturing data. You also say GIS as computer applied system in which you capture, store, retrieve, analyze and display the spatial data in a particular organization. It's been said by Clark. Then GIS is also a powerful spatial tool for collecting, storing, retrieving, transforming and displaying spatial data from a real world. So anything around you you all can repeat and this is one person who we all also call father of GIS, Burrow. He is the one who has actually added the organizational path. Another definition of GIS which I want you to look at it is a GIS is a computer based system that provides us sets of capabilities to handle georeference data, data input, data output, data management, data manipulation and also analyzing the spatial data. So in case if we have a look at it, what Arnav says, many of them are also saying the words which are similar. So GIS, now I will give you one more definition. 
GIS is an information technology which stores, analyzes, and displays both to be noted spatial and non spatial data. So, in case if we have a look at it, this was the definition given by Parker, but I am sure after looking at these definitions, now you all are in a position to make your own definition. And now for the definition, you do not need many words my friends. What you all need are only these six alphabets. Number one C, number two S, number three T, number four is T and then you have A and then you have D. So, it is C, S, T, A, R, D. So, now what are these words? I think so that you all can definitely know these words because you have just gone through all those definitions given by a great academician. C is capturing data, S is storing data, R is retrieving data, T is transforming data, A is now collecting together and analyzing data, D is displaying both spatial and non-spatial data in GIS environment. So now what is important for us to remember are only these six alphabets C, S, T, A, R, D. Let us move ahead now. GIS is one discipline which has definitely gone ahead and have taken the knowledge base from number of disciplines. One is of course geography, second is the computer sciences, third is mathematics, civil engineering, surveying, economics, town planning, agriculture and so on and so forth. Only because of that you have number of discipline taking and using GIS but calling it with some other name. Now let us just come to know and just go through those names which are so similar to the subjects which we are getting introduced to today. Number one is multi-purpose geographical data system. Number two computerized GIS. Number three image based information system. Some also call it a land resource information system as a subset. Natural resource academicians call it natural resource management information system. Some call it a spatial data handling system. Another people call it spatial information system, environmental information system, automated GIS and also some people call it as knowledge based GIS. So dear friends anything that you do, so the only three things which we have to remember is GIS stand for geographic that is location, information that is we want to infer something from it, it is a system, it is a computer based environment in which we all go ahead. So now let us know what answers can GIS answer and we all can find. As I told you dear friends earlier six alphabets, here I am going to tell you five. So remember please make a note, now we are into six plus five, eleven. Now what are these five alphabets? These are L, C, P, T and M. So what does this mean? What are these words? What does this mean by L, C, P, T and M? L is of course the first word which I said you cannot do without it that is location. That is so important. And as geographers we all know the latitudes, longitude or any other cardinal points that we all want to go ahead with. Dear friends, that is something which you all have to always remember. Now where are you located? Where is India located? Where is USA located? Where is Gujarat located? Where is river Nile are the questions which are so very much related to location. After this the second question that comes into our mind is C that is condition. Condition where is it? As we all know relative location we all are knowing where is it? How is it? 
What type is it? Say if we say it is UGC, what is UGC related with? Higher education. And in case if we want to say Vigyan Bhavan or Ashoka Hotel, what do we have there? We have conferences there. In case if we talk about Kashmir, it is a state that is heart of India which, is, which lies in the northernmost region. Then what is the other word that was there was P that is patterns. What type of patterns which are formed there? You have sometimes heterogeneous patterns, you have sometimes homogeneous pattern, you have sometimes club or a hybrid of these two and we all understand that that as geographers for our spatial patterns are so very important and GIS tells us that. M is dear friends modeling. We all are interested to simulate that spatial and non-spatial data. So it also goes ahead and it also tell about the modeling that is we model, we create a setup we model, we create models and we go ahead with it. There are two types of data which are there and which we all use in that locational environment. One is a spatial data, second is an aspatial data and as you can see it in this figure which is lying on the presentation desk that one is a spatial, another is a non-spatial or aspatial or what we call in a GIS environment is an attribute data. Now you can go ahead and you can find so many spatial features and to give value to that spatial feature what we need to do is we add an earth spatial data. Let's go ahead and understand now a little more what is this spatial data. Spatial data is the one that gives us information about the features which are geometrical in nature like it tells us about the orientation, shape, size and position with respect to other features. When I say orientation, as you can see, you, you have a line there which is like a x to y coordinates are there. There are points on that map of India and you will find that where is it located? Northern side, eastern side, is it bigger, is it larger, is it smaller? All these things are something which are spatial. It gives us that cardinal location that this place is located in this particular reference point which in GIS environment we call it, yes you guessed it right, we call it a geo reference location. And as I said, so now with spatial we have an earth spatial. Now let us find what is this. Earth spatial data is a qualitative information about the locational feature or the spatial data. Say for example, if you have this particular tree then you will also be able to know that, that this tree what is the name of it? Is it Banj, Baraz, Ayar, Untis or in case if this road is there, which road is this? Which highway is this? Is it National Highway 24, National Highway 44 and so on. So then that means spatial feature is the one that only conveys the spatial attribute but the value addition is given and the name is given to it by the attribute feature or the non-attribute feature. So normally, so now what we have done, S spatial, A spatial and GIS environment also stores the linkages of two. So that means the storing of the information is also spatial or spatial and those linkages. So, so then that means data is stored in spatial, or spatial and linkages. So till now what we have learned, we have learned 6 words, 5 words and now 3, 6, 5, 11, 3, 14 and that means I am halfway through my lecture. Let us now find out about the elements of GIS. What are these elements of GIS which are so very important. In GIS any information that you have, you need to put it in the category of P, L, A and another A. Now what is this PLAA? In the adjacent map which is from the East Kolkata wetland, you can visualize all these words. But what is P? P is again the one which is a point. Any information that you have, it, you have to decide whether you want to call it a point, 
you want to call it a line, you want to call it an area or, an, uh, or uh, you want to call it a polygon or you want to call it just simple none of these and you want to call it a simple non-spatial database, you have to decide. Say for example, in a world map, in case if we want to put Delhi, Delhi there is a point. But in a map of India, it's an area. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, you're right. So headquarter is a point, temple is a point, which you can see in the adjacent map also. Now let's understand what is a line. Line is made up of two points and we need to assign value to, a, to the point X and to the point Y. As you can see in the image which is there, where one point is an A and other point is a P. But my friends, of course in today's time the software have become so smarter that we have, can do anti-clockwise and all that. But my advice to each one of you when you will be using GIS, please use lines and the directions in a clockwise direction. This will always be very helpful to you when you will be retrieving data. So we have done what? We have done P. P was what? Yeah, you, correct, you guessed it right, point. L, L was what? Line. Now let's come to the third word that is polygon. Polygon is something, in GIS environment we use it as polygon, otherwise we all know dear friends it's an area and it is defined by lines, combination of lines and the adjacent map of India, all those states which are there, you can create buffers, you can create overlays and you can do all that and that's something there. So my friends, you all have to remember point line area has no meaning as I said you before unless and until you give it a value with the help of non-spatial data which in GIS environment we call it as the word starting with A and ends with E, yes attribute data and that's something which is so very important. So now after learning all these basics this is what GIS is and then we add on further to the components. So that's one section. What we have learned? We have learned that what is important to us are these words C, S, T, A, R, D, L, C, P, T, F and another one are point, line, area and polygon. If we know this then that means we are in the right direction dear friends. So now let's try to know the basic components of GIS. What are the basic components of GIS? As I told you, the basic components are hardware, software, network, data, people and procedures. Here I like to tell you, do you know something? That till 1960 when it all started off either in Canada or USA, GIS never became popular. It never became a billion dollar industry as it is today only because people were missing and that's what Burroughs said. Only because organizations never realized the potential of GIS. So remember everything is a waste in the computerized environment unless and until people like you and me get together and decide that we have to use it and we have to optimally use it. So now let's move ahead a little more. That is let's expand on the five GIS software modules. We'll be expanding onto this further in the coming days to come when you'll be seeing other lessons. But well, volume one is, it was required for C, what was C? Capture, yes. So the module one is data input and verification. That means this is a software that transform various data to digital form. It also transforms the data, the spatial data and the non-spatial data in that environment which computer can decode and let us know easily. So now what is the second module? Second module after that what we do? We need to store data. So the second module is the one which helps us in data storage and database management. How this data has to be stored, how it has to be organized in a database management system that is what is the second. That means CS, S storing darling if you all remember. Module 3 is what? It is that data output and the presentation, how we all do that is something which is required and which this software tells us. Whether we are geographers, we want maps, somebody wants tables, somebody wants figures, somebody is happy with a pie diagram, somebody with a bar diagram and then in what form do we need? We need a printer, we need a plotter 
that's another thing. So that's the module three. Module four is the one which is so very important and that's what something which you all have to always remember is the power of GIS. As GIS is something where we are overlaying one layer over another. So those layers one over the other and the other and the other is something which is so very important. And in case GIS helps us in transformation, it helps us in transforming scale. Say I have a map, I have one layer from a census of India map with an RF 1 is to 50,000. Another map which I'm having it from the forest resource department is the 1 is to 25,000. Another map which now we become so this thing is 1 is to 10,000. So GIS is such a powerful tool that we all can change a scale accordingly. And that's something which we all should definitely do before we try to overlay an image. Then GIS also helps in putting the projections together in case if this one projection is cylindrical, another projection is a conical. Of course, we cannot overlay one map over the other with half of the map going wasted. So what we do is we overlay that GIS helps us in doing that. Isn't it powerful? So please use it. Logical retrieval of data. Now you have not to make you have not to make your thematic maps by drawing one with a one outline boundary and in case if I have done it wrong. I again do it the next sheet. It's so easy. Just retrieve it from your previous boundary. That's what geographic information system is all about. Then it's also application oriented. What the user want. That's something with GIS I think so. It's so very important. It helps us in removing errors. It helps us in bringing them update. Say for example, I made a map. I've constructed an atlas in 2013. Today it is 2017. I want to add on to that data and I'll be able to do it. Sex ratio we know is so horrible, but again some regions are coming up. I would like to put that, I can easily unveil that by updating information and that's what why the reason why we all are studying geography is so important. To match them to other data sets also, we all can definitely do that. If I have a 1 is to 1 million information, I want to do that, I can do it. So GIS is something which helps me in doing all that. But as I was telling you before, GIS would not go ahead unless and until you and me decide and understand the importance of that. That means even today the capacity building programs of GIS are again going, you know, in the backstage. Why? Because we do not have enough manpower who is trained into that. So, dear friends, there's a lot of potential in this. And I'm telling you now, these big projects which all are coming in this present government, which is doing all these projects, GIS is something, so you all have to get trained into that. Management information is required, management, all those things have to be required. The queries inbuilt which are there is something which is so very important. We can update any time, any information, any scenario I want to change with a recent time. Now as GST is getting uh, introduced, I may be wanting to locate some industry somewhere and I may be finding more research. I can just do that in case if I have put the data input right. You must have remembered in your 6th class, 7th class, 8th class when you were doing computer science with your friends. What do you do? Garbage in, garbage out, your teacher must have said. Similarly, if your spatial data and if your uh, spatial data is a garbage, is incorrect georeference, then it's very dangerous. So please remember, be slow, zoom your information and then input that. And that's something which is so very important. Now the question is that why do we need GIS? Of course, I know that you all know this by now because every object present on this earth which is there is georeference and it can be georeference. And georeference, if you remember your uh, lesson which has been there till now is simply a coordinate reference system and more than 80% of the information, any decision, all these mega projects which are being taken place nowadays are making use of GIS. Do you know all those apps which you are making use of by ordering your food is making use of that. Second reason which is so very important is that every spatial question can be answered by GIS. For example, where should I first launch my product anybody want? Or you also want to know which college should I study in? Or you want to go which university in the world should I go in? Should I go to Harvard? Should I go to Columbia? Or should I study in IIT? Should I study in IAM? 
that can be answered. Then every aspatial question can also be something which can be answered by GIS. For example, in case if you want to know what is the average number of students who are studying this subject remote sensing and GIS in their post graduation, you can also find that and that's something which is so very relevant and dear friends if you just want to know now you all have become very smart and you all want to now start up with the startup which Modi government has given us where to do what startup make use of GIS and you'll be able to do it another thing is that GIS is an exceptional predictive capability when I say that because it's giving us a prediction in a spatio-temporal framework where, what, when it also tells us that and that's something which is this thing. So now the question is why do we need GIS? Why, why and why it is still not there? Because it reduces my work, it reduces data redundancy, it also helps me in data integration, it also helps me in maintaining data consistency, it also helps me in capabling and telling me where to target what. It also enhances my capability. Remember, you all studied economics, if not, but there is one principle which is there and that's called a principle of opportunity cost. What is that principle? Maximum returns at every place in an optimum way and that's what GIS enables you to do, especially in the today automated environment. GIS helps me in automated mapping and I think so all of you are definitely use the Google map when you're driving and that young lady smartly tells you turn right, turn left, go straight, stop, change your route and that's what is GIS. And further that, so then why till now GIS has not been gone up? Number one, the reason why today it is at its peak for a simple reason. Why? Because today you are easily available. Those all lovely computers in your desktop. Earlier there was a low speed and do you know at my age when I started using GIS you had, you had it in a big room and which you could not have it in your home and now you all are having it in your hand. High speed today there is to finish one task it's just, just in a small fraction of a second you just close your eyelid and that work is done in a spatial temporal framework. Office setup is something people have got used to it. Homes and not only that today you all are having lovely smartphones and I'm sure you all are using those smartphones in such a continuous way and GIS helps you to do that. Number one. So that means my hardware has become fast and cheap and easy to use. Number two, another thing which is there is that today we all are talking about big data. Today we are getting high resolution data, we are getting Iconos data, we are getting Landsat data, we are getting IRS images, we are getting those images even at the resolution of 0 0.6 meter. That means what I am what I'm doing right now is then that means such high data, such voluminous data in just fraction of seconds you all can make use of that and ultimately why do we use data? We only use data so that we all can definitely use it, work it and take a smart decision and that's something which is there. Then not only that, I can visualize that, I can visualize in the format that I want. As a geographer of course I understand, you all visualize data in the maps because we all understand maps so very well. If somebody tells us that this region is not there, this region is there, that's something which GIS definitely tells us. Further, we also have GIS, we also having data in all three formats. And we all know it, all three platforms, we all are having it. Number two, we are having a ground-based platform, aerial platform and a space platform. So there's so much voluminous data that is coming and we all are making use of it. And if in case if a disaster happens, dear friends, of course it should not happen. We don't want a disaster. We don't want an earthquake. If now UGC building lies in Delhi, we all know that it is susceptible to earthquake any time and which it's course and the way the climate change is happening, GIS helps us in making use of that real-time GPS given data or the way we have today the NAVIC which is our own uh, uh, navigation satellite. Today we all can make use of that data in a real-time environment using GIS and take correct decisions and of course dear friends we all know it that what is very important is that we all should have that will of using this technology. So my request to each one of you is today the day when we have an internet, internet, 
mobile GIS, cloud computing, please update yourself in this tool and make use of this GIS and go ahead and do that. And I'm so sure friends, you all have used GIS knowingly or unknowingly. How many times have you used or have you ordered food by Food Panda or the Swiggy app or you have used Ola on other uh, all those apps which are there. You have booked your flight tickets, you have booked your train tickets, you all have used GIS and they all are doing it. Reliance, you name it, any energy sector, even the energy that's coming to your home are the ones which are using GIS. So isn't it a time my friends for you all to know, you all to understand, you all to also follow. So let us just know and it's not that earlier in my time, my generation, when I started using GIS, it was very expensive because we were only attuned to something called proprietary GIS software. I would like to give you the name of the proprietary software a little later, but today we have GIS software right here available in the open source environment. Yes, that means just go to that, just go to Google search, find download and you all are much smarter than our generation. You all do not need people to help you go ahead like that. You all get into that games mode also and even you these games which you're doing are GIS environment. So now these software are Grass GIS, Saga, Map Window GIS, Elvis, that integrated land and water uh, information system. Elvis, yes, now at present it's in out, uh, open source. Jump GIS is there, open jump. QGIS or what we call a quantum GIS is something. That means the list is endless. So please do not give me a reason that, oh ma'am, I wanted to use it, but it's very expensive. It's not. So now let's come to proprietary software. That means the companies which are yeah, slightly this thing. So we have Autodesk product, which include Map 3D. Then you have further the Topofolia, you have other, you have uh, AutoCAD. You have other software which are there, you've got Bentley system which again are giving us the products. Of course, these are the products which are slightly expensive, dear friends. But my request to each one of you is, when you go into the high-end uh, need and high-end requirement for your startups or the other requirements, you will be needing little more applicability. Then you have Irdas Imagine is there, which is wonderful with your, all those lovely spatial data that you get from a space platform and Irdas Mapper and then the S3 products. S3 products are there right in which Jack Danger Mod is the president. You have ArcView GIS, you've got ArcGIS, you've got an ArcMap, you've got all those I'm telling you and today what I'm also wanting to do are the ones to get into the story maps and insights. So you can all play with it like your game. So there are so many software. So today my purpose of giving you this lecture was not only so that you all can recognize map info, ArcView, ArcGIS, Mac Extreme, but for me, my request to each one of you, the one who is here, is not only to learn GIS, not only to remember those alphabets. Let's just recapitulate. CSTART, capture, store, transform, analyze, retrieve, and display spatial and non-spatial data using what are that? Oh yes, you know it, dear friends. L line, P points. And that's something is so very important with the attribute data. A was area, polygon, and attribute. So please, my request to each one of you is GIS is future. This is the first lesson of GIS. We'll go ahead and we'll learn each layer by layer. So please enjoy your GIS. Use it and thank you very much. Thank you very much.